In this video I will talk about the saturation of the CO2 infrared absorption in the Earth's atmosphere. In the last two videos I covered the greenhouse effect on a more planetary scale. It turned out that the alleged greenhouse effect of 33 degrees centigrade is the result of an improper use of the Stefan Boltzmann law, and that a less abusive application of this law makes the greenhouse effect almost disappear. In this video I will focus on the lower atmosphere. Before I talk about the saturation of the CO2 absorption in the atmosphere, we will have a short look at how the atmospheric greenhouse effect is supposed to work. The Earth's surface, heated by the sun, emits infrared radiation. A part of the outgoing IR radiation is absorbed by greenhouse gas molecules and re-emitted in a random direction. This back radiation is supposed to keep the Earth's surface about 33 degrees centigrade warmer than it would otherwise be. The implication of this mechanism is that higher greenhouse gas concentrations cause more back radiation and thus more warming of a surface. To understand these processes we need a very basic idea of infrared spectrometry. The most important instrument for studying the interactions of greenhouse gas molecules with infrared radiation is the infrared spectrometer. For the purpose of this video you don't need to know how an infrared spectrometer works. Just think of it as a machine that sends infrared light through a sample and measures how much of the infrared light is able to go through the sample depending of the wavelength of the infrared light. In infrared spectroscopy the wavelength is often given as wave number. The wave number is just another measuring unit for the wavelength. The wave number is defined as the number of wavelengths per centimeter. To convert a wave number into a wavelength just divide one centimeter by the wave number. For example, when we convert the wave number of the CO2 absorption at 667, 1 over centimeter, into micrometers, we get 15 micrometers. The measuring range of most infrared spectrometers lies between wave number 400 and wave number 4000, or between 25 micrometers and 2.5 micrometers. Infrared spectrometers provide diagrams showing the transmittance of a sample for infrared radiation as a function of the wavelength of the infrared radiation. Such a representation is called an infrared spectrum. Here we see an infrared spectrum of CO2 gas. The transmittance, tau, indicates the fraction of the irradiated light that can penetrate the sample. Tau equals the intensity of the light that penetrates the sample, I, over the irradiated light intensity, I0. According to modern climate science, that CO2 absorption at wave number 667 is mostly responsible for the anthropogenic greenhouse effect. To evaluate this claim, we will examine how the absorption of 15 micrometer infrared radiation depends on the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. In this context the phenomenon of saturation is of importance. To visualize that, let's start with an everyday life example. Anyone who has tried to paint a black wall white has made the following observation. After the first paint, the wall is dark gray. After the second coat it is gray. With the following coats of paint, the wall becomes lighter and lighter. Then a coat thickness is reached where a further coat of paint does not make the wall any whiter. The first coats of paint make the wall much whiter. With the last coats, you have to look closely to see a difference from the previous coat. A similar effect is also observed when the concentration of a greenhouse gas in the atmosphere is increased. I will explain this effect using CO2 as an example. If the atmosphere contains no CO2, figure 1, the infrared frequencies that CO2 absorbs can escape unhindered into space. Dot if you now add a small amount of CO2 to the atmosphere, each CO2 molecule is hit by the infrared radiation and can absorb radiation, figure 2. If you increase the CO2 concentration further, like depicted in figure 3, it happens that some CO2 molecules move in the shadow of other CO2 molecules. At this CO2 concentration, each additional CO2 molecule no longer increases the absorption effect. If the CO2 concentration is increased further, like depicted in figure 4, a CO2 concentration is reached at which practically complete absorption is achieved. A further increase in the CO2 concentration then causes practically no further increase in absorption. The atmosphere is then practically impermeable to the infrared radiation absorbed by CO2. This state is called saturation.
when the saturation concentration of CO2 is reached. A further increase in CO2 concentration does not lead to any measurable increase in infrared absorption, and thus the greenhouse effect. This dependence of the permeability of a medium from the concentration of an absorbing component of the medium is described by Lambert Beer's law. The extinction at wavelength, lambda, equals the decadic logarithm of irradiated light intensity, I0, over the light intensity that passes through the medium, I, equals the extinction coefficient for the wavelength lambda, times the concentration of the absorbing substance, C, times the lay thickness of the medium that the light has to pass through, D, or as an exponential function, the transmission, tau, equals the light intensity that passes through the medium, I, over the irradiated light intensity, I0, equals 10 to the power of minus epsilon lambda times c times d. If the extinction coefficient of CO2 in air for the wavelength 15 micrometers is known, this equation allows us to calculate how a beam of 15 micrometer radiation is weakened during its way through the atmosphere. Since this extinction coefficient was not published so far, Heinz Hug determined it by laboratory measurements and used it to estimate the effect of a doubling of the atmospheric CO2 concentration on the greenhouse effect and global warming. The PDF of his publication is available on the Ike website. In air samples containing 357 ppmv CO2, which equals 0.0159 mole per cubic meter, and 2.6% of water he measured an extinction coefficient of epsilon at 15 micrometer to be 20.2 square meter per mole. With this extinction coefficient, the transmittance for a distance of 10 meters in air is 0 0.0006. This means that after passing through approximately 10 meter of air, infrared radiation with a wavelength of 15 micrometer is 99.94% absorbed. It can therefore be assumed that the atmosphere in the area of the 15 micrometer absorption of CO2 is practically impermeable. A further increase in the CO2 concentration can therefore not cause a further increase in this absorption. That means that a CO2 greenhouse effect, so it exists at all, is already saturated at the current atmospheric CO2 concentration. To visualize that, I plotted the transmittance at a wavelength of 15 micrometer through a 10 meter thick layer of air as a function of the CO2 concentration. This shows that, even at the much cited, pre-industrial 280 ppmv of CO2, the 15 micrometer absorption is at saturation. To get an idea about the range of a supposed back radiation, I plotted the transmittance of a near-ground air layer with 400 ppmv CO2 as a function of layer thickness or height. After its way through a few meter of air, the 15 micrometer radiation is completely absorbed. 15 micrometer back radiation from the atmosphere to the Earth's surface is therefore limited to a ground layer measuring only a few meters. The IPCC is aware of this problem, and therefore argues that the rotational bands above and below the 15 micrometer band provide an amplification of the greenhouse effect with a further increase in the atmospheric CO2 concentration. Since the rotational bands only absorb very weakly, even the IPCC cannot construct a large greenhouse effect from these absorptions. According to the IPCC, currently the natural greenhouse effect causes a back radiation from the atmosphere to the Earth's surface of about 324 watt per square meter. In the case of a doubling of the current CO2 concentration, the IPCC estimates that the back radiation caused by CO2 will increase by about 4 watt per square meter. This means that a doubling of the atmospheric CO2 concentration causes a 1.2% increase of the greenhouse effect. Now let's calculate, with the official IPCC figures, what warming effect a doubling of the atmospheric CO2 concentration should have. According to the Stefan Boltzmann law, the Earth, with an average surface temperature of 15 degrees centigrade or 288 Kelvin irradiates with 390 watt per square meter into space, after a doubling of CO2, this irradiation will increase by 4 watt per square meter. Now we go back to the Stefan Boltzmann equation with 394 watt per square meter and get an average surface temperature of 15.7 degrees centigrade. Using the official IPPC figures,
the doubling of the atmospheric CO2 concentration causes an increase in the world average temperature of 0.7 degrees centigrade. To save the CO2 story, a positive feedback through water vapor has been invented. This feedback is supposed to amplify the rather meager direct warming effect of a CO2 doubling. This is supposed to work as follows. An increase in CO2 concentration causes a small increase in the surface temperature. The small increase in the surface temperature causes more evaporation of water and thus a higher concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas. More water vapor in the atmosphere causes even more back radiation and thus greenhouse warming. The now higher air temperature allows the atmosphere to absorb even more water. This feedback is supposed to warm the Earth's surface by 1.5 to 4.5 degrees centigrade. The hypothesis of this water vapor feedback is not supported by real-world observations. For example, the water vapor content of the atmosphere over the Atlantic Ocean shows no correlation with the increasing atmospheric CO2 concentrations of the last decades. To the contrary, one would expect that a higher water vapor content of the atmosphere should result in a cooling effect due to increased cloud formation. Heinz Hug guessed, based on his measurements, that about 0.17% of the CO2 absorption are not yet saturated at about 400 ppm V CO2. According to the IPCC, the CO2 currently contained in the atmosphere should cause a back radiation from the atmosphere to the Earth's surface of about 32 watt per square meter. With Hugg's best guess of a 0.17% increased CO2 absorption for a doubling of the atmospheric CO2, the IPPC's estimation of 4 watt per square meter would be much too high. An increase of less than 0.05 watt per square meter would fit better to Hugg's measurement. This would bring the additional warming of 0.7 degrees centigrade, caused by a doubling of the atmospheric CO2 concentration, down to about 0.01 degrees centigrade. 